Hi everyone, my name is Erin Elizabeth Marenberg. Thank you so much for choosing to be here with me today. Welcome back if you've been here before and welcome if you're new here. Today we're talking about the law of contrast. Okay, so this is a universal law that is present in this realm, contributes to our human experience, okay? And basically at its core, the law of contrast states that we can only know certain things or feel certain things or have certain emotions or certain experiences because we've experienced the opposite. Okay, and so this reminds us that opposites are reminders of each other. Opposites help us expand our depth of awareness of what we can feel, of what we know is true, of what resonates for us. Okay, so we know that certain things can only, we can only identify certain things in our energy field and as a feeling or as a sensation because we've experienced a whole range of different things within that. Okay, so on a very basic level, you can think about understanding this in terms of like, happiness versus sadness, right? Sometimes the ego can convince us that, well, <laughs> if I never felt sadness, life would be so much better and it would be so amazing. There'd be no problems and I would never have to be sad and okay, blah, 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 right? But sadness is just an emotion and it's just something that comes and goes. Um, obviously I'm not talking about like mental health uh, situations, but in general, like feelings of sadness or loss or something, this comes and it comes in waves. And the only reason we know we're sad um, is because we felt what happiness feels like. Okay, we, we felt the opposite of that. And same thing with um, happiness. We only know we're happy or joyful or lighthearted because we know what the opposite feels like. And when you experience the opposite, it helps remind us that, okay, if you only ever felt happiness, for example, if sadness was an emotion you never felt, you got to escape it from the human experience, you never, you know, felt despair or heartbreak or sadness or anything, then what you feel wouldn't be happiness. It would just be normal because it, there was no um, experience to give you like the bookend, the other, the other opposite of it. So, you know, nothing, we wouldn't be able to identify feelings. We, we can't identify feelings or experiences or anything like this without its opposite. Cause it would just be as it is. It would just be this thing that exists by itself. It would just be a thing that um, exists without a counter, without something for us to be able to have a reference point for something being the opposite of that. Okay. And so you can do this with like any, any opposites to understand this, to internalize it, to, to kind of get the, you know, get what I'm trying to talk about here. Like, so for example, of course, we know triumph and success because we know defeat and failure. We know peace because we felt chaos. We know what love is like because we felt heartbreak. We know what health feels like because we've been sick. We know grace and mercy because we felt cruelty, right? So maybe we felt some of these emotions um, or these feelings or these states of being before, but we feel them in a new way or we can recognize them as something temporary or something that's happening once we have the opposite experience. So it kind of further solidifies, oh yeah, this is this thing and this is this other thing. And then there's nuance in between, of course, and then it gets more specific and there's more understanding of how they look in more, um, more nuanced ways, okay? But all of these experiences together, the whole end of the spectrum or the very specific experience in this exact way or this exact thing, all of that works together to help us like fine tune and know ourselves and understand, okay, you know, we understand ourselves better and we understand the world better outside of us when we feel these things. So it helps us to identify, okay, this feels right and good for me. This is something I don't want to contribute, this feeling I don't want to contribute to anymore. Um, and again, just helping us understand how we can identify within ourselves and how we can understand the world around us. So all of this helps contribute to our soul growth and the point of all of this is to help us integrate all of these things on the whole scale and the whole spectrum to find balance and find truth for you and also for you to identify beyond your emotions. Okay, so um, an example of that would be, you know, like if I'm so attached to happiness, which is a fleeting emotion, you know, all emotions come in waves, come and go. If I'm so attached to happiness that I don't let myself um, ever experience who I am without that, that when it leaves, you know, again, these moments where happiness isn't here permanently all the time, when that happens, I can turn inward and feel so I don't know who I am. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what this is. So all these experiences help us find balance and truth for ourselves. Um, not just knowing ourselves, because we know we exist beyond these temporary emotions that come and go, but also we can use these differing experiences to know what works for us, what feels best for us, and also how we want to act, right? How this can contribute how we want to um, show up in the world. So maybe for a long time, you didn't realize that 
you did this certain thing because you just grew up around it. You thought it was normal. You thought whatever. But then once you're in a different environment or a different setting, you learn, oh, that was actually really chaotic behavior and a, a peaceful option exists, but it was just your baseline understanding. And so when you can open yourself to have some more awareness around this piece, around, um, you know, things that feel good for you, then you can realize, okay, I can change my behavior and be different. And this also, of course, can come from experiences you have with other people. So for example, you might know how to be a good friend because of times when you had a good friend who really loved and supported you, but also times when you maybe had a friendship that wasn't the best, or maybe you didn't show up as the best friend, um, the best version of a friend as you can be, you know, so it could be, you know what it felt like to be left high and dry or be stood up or you know, be taken advantage of. And so you can integrate that within yourself of like, okay, I know I don't want to do that for myself. Sometimes these opposing experiences with this law of contrast, you know, this reminder of what else is possible, it just shows us what we don't want to be like, or these things we don't want to contribute to, or things we don't want to put our energy stamp on and say, oh yeah, that's something that, you know, feels resonant for me, right? So once you get used to this and you can identify and you can see where on the scale, all these experiences are happening, then you know how to choose the things that feel right for you because you have experienced the full scale of these things. And obviously, of course, with your relationship with yourself, with other people in different settings and different environments, you might have different preferences for these things. And that's totally fine. Obviously, it's totally allowed. Okay. Um, but it's up for you to know, you know, to feel this spectrum and just get more nuanced and more clear and identify what works for you and what doesn't work for you. So for example, like you'll know, okay, am I like, once you have this love contrast experience of like, okay, this is what it feels like to be by myself. This is what it feels like to nourish my own energy, to allow all of that. And then this is what it feels like when I'm with people, when I'm being filled up, when I'm being taken care of and held by my community, right? When you have both of those experiences, then you can further identify within yourself. Okay. This is the time that I know, you know, my soul needs to tap into this feeling of peace and quiet and solitude with myself. And I know this is a time my soul wants to tap into love and community care. You know, when something, you know, this is a situation where um, this is a situation where I want to offer my peace and this, and this is a situation where a boundary has been crossed. And so I know I need to stand up for myself and not respond or not react or whatever. So, you know, all of these things, again, are just reminders that emotions and these experiences, they are not meant to be stagnant. We're meant to experience the full wave of the human experience. We're meant to experience all emotions. Again, the highs, the lows, the things we want, the things we don't want. And again, we can only understand certain emotions in certain ways or certain feelings in certain ways because we've experienced the opposite. And that's part of the human experience. And it's a reminder that, you know, none of these feelings last forever, even if it's You've been in a state of these things way longer than you would like. Okay, that's also normal. But these waves of emotions and feelings and experiences, all of those are collectively contributing to your soul growth and how you understand yourself and how you want to show up in the world and how you can identify what you're feeling, how you can deepen your relationship with yourself, how you can fine tune okay, this feeling feels like this. And in this situation, it feels like this. And this thing feels like this. And it's a way for you to turn inward and to really again, just really fine tuning, get clear about like, okay, I'm feeling anger, but I'm feeling it from, you know, sadness, or I'm feeling it from betrayal, or I'm feeling it from abandonment or whatever. It's like, once you've experienced these different range of emotions, though, all of those things, again, are reminders of one another, and they help us see clearly into our own hearts and our own soul, and understand ourselves more and understand the type of person we want to be, and contribute that to the world and show up to the world in that way. And then the last thing I want to say about this, like usual in all my videos, I talk about um, law of contrast does not, 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 you do not need to condone or go through behaviors of abuse or trauma to learn through the situation, right? So there's someone, there's a difference between someone who just like wasn't being a friend in a way that works for you versus someone who is like abusing you or taking advantage of you in like a very harmful, abusive, um, toxically traumatic way. Okay. So you don't need to go through abuse or trauma to learn via the law of contrast. And if you've gone through abuse or trauma, um, you can interpret that however you want for yourself. But I just want to tell you, you do not have to find a lesson in abuse or trauma if you don't want to. Okay. Surviving it is enough. Getting through it is enough. And you like recovering and moving forward in your life in the best you can is enough. So law of contrast does not, you know, count or I don't think it's important or helpful <laughs> to honestly, to teach it in like a situation of um, abuse or trauma. 
right? It could be something where like, you know, maybe you learn with a law of contrast, like you fast, you practice fasting as a spiritual thing. So then you can appreciate when you have a full meal or something to eat, but you don't need to experience like extreme poverty where you don't have access to food to feel that, right? It should be a choice. It should be something that um, is not harmful in like a very traumatic way in that sense. Okay. So as usual, not condoning this with abuse or trauma. But besides that, okay, the love contrast is here to teach us and for us to, again, expand our soul growth, to feel all these feelings, to not get stuck in certain emotions and just kind of identify beyond this scale of feelings that we have and know that all of these experiences, again, contribute to how we understand ourselves, how we show up for the world, to the world, all of that. Okay, that's everything I have for you. If you ever want any more information about me, all that is linked below. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a wonderful day.